So our friends over at Creoform sent us a Creoform HandyScan Max Elite. This is newer technology and it's much better for scanning large objects such as a monster truck or a car. And we want to put it through its paces so we figured out what better way to do that than to scan the MiG. We also have a couple boxes of these magnetic targets. Essentially it's just a plastic ball with targets all over it and a magnet on the bottom. So for a car or a chassis or something large like that that's made out of metal, you can easily pop a couple of these on, scan it, pop them back off, 15 minutes later you're done. However, this is made out of aluminum. But the new scanner takes about 25% of the dots that the old one did in order to maintain accuracy. So that means we can use a lot less of them. So we're gonna get this thing dotted up, get as much detail as we can, and really put the scanner to the test. So let's get into it. All right, so this is a Polish MiG-21. Why is it here? Why do we have it? And why is it sitting in our parking lot? Well, the story behind that is a local company that we do business with sometimes buys fleets of decommissioned aircraft from around the world and they refurbish them and their pilots use them in war games against the US military for practice. It's tradition for all airmen to have a really nice bar in their hangar apparently. So while we were there, uh, we had a couple of drinks with them in their really nice bar at their hangar and it was really cool. And we had a great time. And during that, it was made known that they had a fleet of MiG-21s that were not quite up to par for what they like as far as quality and they didn't know what to do with them it was said we got to get rid of these mig 21s and we were like well we'll take one and they're like well, we'll give you one and then the next thing you know the next day we're signing a stack of paperwork from the government saying we'd never fly this or use it at all for any reason other than a decoration so that's why it's here and it's all there, except for the optics, which apparently become radioactive over time. So they had to remove those. And there's also no propulsion system in the ejection seats. And it also came with a zero hour engine. And I don't really know anything about this engine. So let's get back to the scan. A little high spot. Yeah, it's a little high. I'm not good with heights. Also, heat. <laughs> Yeah, so each one of these wings is about the same size as a car. <laughs> so once you get going, it feels like, oh, this is not gonna be a big deal. But yeah, this is basically a pile of cars we're trying to put dots on. So it takes a little while, even though we're doing a lot less dots, there's just a lot more area to cover. But so it's kind of wearing me out. Also, it's like 100 degrees in Florida right now. So it's not exactly a cool, breezy day. <laughs> nice Florida fall <laughs> weather, baby. So the HandyScan Max Elite comes with two of these. Um, essentially, these are calibration tools that allow the scanner to calibrate itself like every time you do a scan. So what you do is you can either magnetize these to the side of something or you can just lay them on the ground near it. And as long as you set it up to where the scan knows exactly where this is, it knows the distance between these two for the most part and that gives it a nice real world reference point. And so that'll ensure that the rest of the scan matches up to that reference point. So it'll all be the perfect size essentially. So it's just for accuracy. In our case here, I'm just gonna lay it on the ground right there. Okay, just like that. And since we have some dots down there, we'll be able to scan that and let it calibrate while we're scanning the rest of these dots. All right, so we got the jet completely scanned, and um, now all we got to do is get back to the lab, put this thing in the computer, and uh, see what we got. So let's go. We're in 
the lab. We actually have a space. What's up, guys? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I'm right here just going through all the files we just took out there on the, on the jet, trying to get everything cleaned up a little bit so that we can put it together. But um, yeah, this is the new space. So we, this used to be just full of garbage. And so, <laughs> and so, and so, so much, much garbage. Yeah, so much garbage. It's awful. <clears throat> and so uh, we gutted it out, um, removed all these panels up here, replaced them, uh, replaced all the ductwork above it. Got it to where it's a, a nice, cool, temperature-wise <laughs> uh, space. Then we went to IKEA and, spent, and you know bought all these uh, couches and tables and things. We just made one of the fastest cars in the world. We figured things out all the time. This couch is kicking my ass, dude. Yeah. IKEA, bro. I can't. So. Uh, oh yeah. Here it is. It's coming along, and it ain't even there yet, man. This is like. Yeah, it ain't even there yet. So the walls are getting filled with all kinds of good stuff. We got ideas for that. And um, this is gonna be a podcast area over here, yeah. Uh, because we want to do, we do want to start having some sort of a podcast. And then if anybody comes by the shop, they'll have a nice, comfortable place to come that doesn't have any, you know, bugs. In it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, or garbage pile up. Something nice for them. Something nice. And then this is where the magic happens, right here. It hadn't even happened yet, but it's gonna happen. It's a lot happening. of magic. It's happening right now. So. It's getting there. So yeah, stay tuned. What would you like to see in this room, man? We're gonna put some uh, cool stuff. We're thinking maybe portrait style LED screens on both either side, maybe, possibly, to display stuff. But we're gonna try and do it up Star Creation style, you know, get real creative with it and make it make it awesome. And then outside of this will be a whole nother space. We're not even gonna show you that right now because it's just <laughs> it's just too messy, dude. Wouldn't even be able to walk through there. All right, all right. I'll do it. This out here will eventually be something nice too, but right now that's what it looks like. And this is actually what it looked like in uh, here. So I was gonna say this is what that looked like. Yeah. What a week and a half, two weeks, two, two. Yeah, two weeks, weeks ago, ago like at the most. But uh, it's getting there now, man. And then this will be finished uh, soon. We're working on that, and that's gonna be a whole video in itself. Got a cool idea for that thing, and. The rest of this will be like a showroom, cool lounge, chill spot for uh, people to come see all the work and awesome stuff that happens. Anyways, let's get back to this thing, man. All right, so we're back here in the lab. We got all the files ready to go. What I went through and did first was just some simple uh, cleaning up. When you do a scan, there's gonna be a bunch of floating little particles here and there every now and then. You might get some pieces of the ground or different things you didn't wanna pick up or the scanner may just have a little anomaly here and there. Um, all you have to do is just turn a slider and it will delete all of these extra floating pieces. And so we also went through and decimated all the scans. That just means taking the amount of um, polygons that we started with, which could end up being easily two, three, four million and bringing that number down to a little bit more manageable number because when you put all of these scans together, you're talking about having a massive file. And other than that, the system is gonna go through and put all these scans together on its own. The reason there's multiple scans is because this is the, the first time using this scanner. I wanted to scan the whole jet as one big chunk. But when I started doing it, it turned out that the jet is a little too reflective so it's basically it's so bright the scanner needs to be able to read its lasers it needs to be able to see them in order to tell what the surface is doing in order to make a 3d model but if the surface is so reflective like this jet is and the sun is in just the right spot <laughs> it's just so bright that it overwhelms the scanner it can't differentiate the lasers from the brightness what I ended up doing is in order to save time, I went through and tried to scan all the parts that were not directly hit by sunlight. Once that was done and the sun was in a perfect position, I was able to go through and scan the entire other side of the jet as one big scan. And that's how it probably would have worked originally. I think I could have gotten the entire thing in one scan had it not been for those little issues. But they're just things that happen when you're scanning something or when you're doing something this large that you've never done before, you come up a little problems like that and you just try to find ways to fix them. So as you can see here, I started with the underside of the jet. Uh, again, it was in shadow at the time, so that made it to where I could easily scan it. Um, if I zoom in, we got some pretty good detail 
um, considering how large this jet is now. The green dots that you're seeing here are the positioning targets that I put on the plane. Um, and if I push this button here and turn them off, uh, you can see that it uh, gets rid of them and it actually fills in all the spots and makes a completely smooth area where the dot was once at. So it knows that those dots are there and it knows it needs to smooth that area. So once we've got this in the system, this is the first scan, uh, we're gonna wanna bring in a second scan and let the system put those scans together automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. If I click this, I've already got this loaded in. There's a second scan right there. Now you can see that it's this blue area right here. Uh, and it kind of doesn't know at first where these scans are supposed to go. So it just throws it in here and they're just overlapping and, and crashing into each other right now. But what you can do is since we do have all this scan data with all the positioning targets, we can um, jump in and allow the computer to put it back together. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna go ahead and align these scans. And all I gotta do is hit alignment, target best fit, and it's gonna go through and do its best uh, to align them up. And as you can see how quick that was, it just kinda jumped in here and it looks a little weird, but what you want is these kind of rough looking patches where the two colors mix. That means the computer's having trouble um, reconciling what should and should not be shown at those parts because they're overlapping so well. There's going to be a little variation between scans, but not much. And in this situation here, this is exactly what we're looking for. Those two scans look like they're just going to go right together perfectly. And then I'm just going to hit accept and it's going to do its thing. It's going to go through and it's going to like um, create one model out of this. What's left to do here is to bring in all the rest of the meshes and add them to this as well and make it all one solid model. Okay, so we may use this plane for a future project, maybe an RC plane or just a 3D printed model. I'm not sure yet. For now, if you want to check it out yourself, I'm going to upload this model. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go there and check it out and see the detail and kind of just have your own model print it. If you do, show it to us. Also, there's a little Easter egg hidden in the model somewhere. If you do download the model and you figure out what that Easter egg is, leave a comment below. The first person to comment what it is, I'm going to send one to you. So thanks again to Creoform for sending us the Creoform HandyScan Max Elite. To have the scanner available to us right now opens a lot of new doors for us. So we've got a lot of really cool projects coming up. Um, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, uh, hit the follow button, share, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll look in that comment. <laughs> then what? Then what's the thing? So don't forget to share it, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, that was good.